Okay, welcome back everybody to another, um, oh, what do we call this? I don't know if I ever came up with a name for this where I look at the different quarters of the year for progressive rock. Um, I don't think I really came up with a title for any of these yet. Um, but yeah, basically we're going to look at the best and the worst of Prague within the second quarter of 2022. We already did quarter one. So if you haven't seen that up there or there, um, I don't know if it's gonna be mirrored vision or anything like that. Um, and of course, much like last time, we've got some guests with us. Um, we've got uh, Brent and Nathan. So Brent, uh, do you want to say hello and introduce yourself? Hey everybody, my name is Brent. I run the Similitude of Prague Facebook page and YouTube channel. And I have a radio station, which I should leave a link down below. Maybe I'll get you to do that. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's good to see everybody. and. Hope it's been a busy, warm summer for everybody so far. Yeah, so far, so good. Uh, and we also have Nathan. Hello, Nathan. Hello, I'm Nathan. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, Nathan on Shuffle, that I run and do a lot of videos on there, do a weekly prog news style video and a lot of album reviews and shows where I'm introducing my wife to prog music, both old and new. So a lot of fun to be had there for sure. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I've left all of their information down below so you can check out both of their channels. Uh, both, I, I find a lot of prog through them. So there's going to be a couple of albums on here that I have discovered through both of your channels. Um, and so, yeah, let's just dive into it. Let's talk about, um, I think we can list, since it's only the three of us, um, if you have one or two or even three of the best albums from uh, April to June of this current year. Uh, we can kind of slide the scale a little bit because there might be a few albums that came out previously that we didn't hear about or some that snuck in at the last minute within the first couple of weeks of July because we are recording this halfway through July. Um, but yeah, why don't we start with Brent? Uh, what was uh, some of the albums that you loved this year? Well, let's go with the uh, probably obvious one. <laughs> you know, that's been probably on my playlist the most. Uh -huh. Um I don't think it's their best, but I think it picks up right after the instant left off, definitely. Mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. just a pleasure to hear those guys together and collaborating again. And it's almost a treat more than anything. I I agree. I think it's definitely a treat for the fans. Um, yeah, and I, I did a full review with Mark from Spectrum Pulse uh, about that album. And yeah, check that yeah. review out. It's good. Yes, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go show Mark some love. Uh, our little prog corner. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I will agree it's probably not their best. I, because I've been jonesing to talk about it on my channel, um, I kind of equate it very similarly to their recordings album where it, it feels like some of the best work that they've done in between albums rather than a full-fledged um, like singular album because of how, I don't wanna say just jointed, but how different each of the tracks sound. Like they sound from mm -hmm. very distinct eras of the band. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you hear a lot of In Absentia and Deadwin, at least that's the two that I would pick out the yeah. most on. Yeah, and I'm even hearing a lot from their own like solo stuff. Like I'm hearing a lot from Raven, from Stephen Wilson, yeah. uh, a lot from Grace for Drowning, um, and even a lot from like Richard's uh, solo stuff, especially with some of the sounds he's playing with. Uh, but yeah, I feel like I've entered in the diminishing returns for that album because like I've just I blasted it for like a good week and a half, and that was the only thing I was listening to. Um, and unlike some of the past works like In Absentia or Fear of a Bleak Planet where, uh, or Blank Planet, I always get those, um, where I kept getting rewarded no matter how much I listened to it. This one, I'm like, okay, I'm not feeling quite as much of the good juice. No, there's, out there's of it, nothing you know? new on it whatsoever as far oh. as song structures or surprises or anything. But. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, what do you think about it? Yeah, I've been really loving it. I think it's a great album, really exciting to have the band back. Um, and I think it just sounds excellent. It's a good collaborative effort. I think it really mm -hmm. is a combination of those three guys. Like they are all equally contributing musically yeah. and just has such a great sound to it. And 
I've, I've been enjoying it more and more as I keep listening to it. I love the, the three bonus tracks, especially are really excellent uh-huh. as well and make for a great album. I kind of wish they were just incorporated into the full album. Perhaps. Yeah, I kind of wish you would have done them too. But yeah. yeah, with those included, I think it's a pretty good package of, of excellent music that really highlights some of the best, best sounding stuff from their catalog, in my mm-hmm. opinion. So really yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I think my favorite track, and I would be really interested to hear what everybody else's favorite track is, but um, Dignity by far is my favorite track off the album. Um, I just, I love the midpoint on that track. Uh, I almost wish that they had stopped it there um but i still love like the second half but man that midpoint of dignity i just love yeah i love dignity too i i even did a show with my wife where we we listened to it so it was really really (laughs) one of my favorites of the year a great song Mm -hmm. and that was definitely the first song that just jumped out at me and said this is an automatic going to be a favorite of yours so just Mm -hmm. don't fight it (laughs) (laughs) just let it happen yeah yeah uh, well that's three of us in the one song that's (laughs) <laughs> that's impressive that is that is uh so nathan what was one that you really jumped out for you what was one of your favorites um well one that i wanted to mention that i really loved was the pure reason revolution mm-hmm. album above cirrus yeah, <laughs> i forgot to bring it it's that's a good album yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoyed that one it's just it's a band you know i i really liked their previous album uh I believe it's called Eupnea from yeah. 2020. Yeah. Um, it was really a strong uh, comeback, but I like this one, I think even more. I think it really uh, dials into their sound even better. It's it's can be a little bit darker and moodier and atmospheric, but they balance it with these great, gorgeous harmonies and the vocals that really elevate it, in my opinion. And it's just, it's a fantastic uh, album that has so many highlights. I love I think it's called Scream Sideways is the track. Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of the best tracks of the year. I just really love it. It's a kind of an extended track that goes through several different moods and feels. And I I just I think it's a standout from the year. Just Mm -hmm. a really cool blend of styles that they have that makes them somewhat unique in the prog landscape, I think. So hard to categorize a little bit, maybe a bit of Pink Floyd elements and heavier like tool like elements Mm -hmm. as well but blended in a really fascinating way that sounds newer and and fresh to me. Yeah, yeah, I've been loving this album. It reminds me almost, um, like, my favorite still from them is The Dark Third, their first album. Um, Mm. But this one is, is like, pretty close at being my second favorite of theirs. Uh, Scream Sideways, for sure. Like, it should get all the awards. Um, (laughs) I the more I'm listening to them, the more I realize that they're using a lot of the same techniques that I love from like Riverside, but blending a lot more harmonizations within the vocals and the, the music. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a real triumph for them this year. Yeah. yeah. It's a very landscapey album to me too. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of electronic stuff in the background happening and I love that album cover. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really neat one. Yeah. I love that one. Um, yeah. For me, this, quarter has been like chock full of really really great music so it was hard to kind of choose one over all the other ones but I think the one that was most immediate and the one that I've returned to the most was Tic Tac Alaka or Tic Tac Alika uh, from Charlie Griffith uh, the uh, one of the main guitarists or I guess the other main guitarist from Haken um, it it still blows me away it's very heavy Um, but unlike a lot of the progressive metal, it doesn't rely on like the gent styles or the being so heavy that you forget to write good music. Um, It was, I don't know, I just loved it. I kept coming back to it. Uh, It was all the things I loved about the heavier side of Haken just kind of steamrolled into one album. Um, Yeah, I return to it more often than almost any other album so far this year i will have to check that out <laughs> yeah it's very good uh it's right beside nathan it's like right on the left side yeah. of his, his there. Yeah. i love that uh, is that yeah. is it a roger dean cover or is it just well, it's so weird because it's not by so, roger dean but okay. it definitely is channeling like in like the, the st- style yeah. Of him. Yeah, yeah it's like roger dean or like hg hg geiger like the two yeah, of them it's... kind of like blending their styles together um yeah it's really gorgeous i really loved it 
yeah i like it too i uh i was a little apprehensive at first because i'm not as into the heavier more mm -hmm. metal like thrash metal kind of stuff and there's a little bit of that there's some growling vocals a bit um but i think it it is structured so well and has a lot of variety to it that it doesn't bother me as much mm -hmm. and so i i feel like you know, there's a good balance of clean vocals and harsher vocals, good balance of proggier stuff, but the metal side as well. So because it's so balanced and a really great uh, structured album with a great concept, I can forgive a lot of that that just isn't to my taste. I know it's really well done, but just is stuff that I need to get used to as I listen to it more and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first, you know, go for it. The first single from it, did it have some growling vocals in it? yeah okay that's i remember starting to listen to it and i just as soon as i hear that guys i just it shuts me right it. off i get it that was i don't me when know I first why it's the same with opeth it. yeah. he's such a great singer but as soon as he starts doing it i have to shut it off i just no, that's fair <laughs> and luckily i don't know it's, why but yeah it doesn't happen a lot like it's in maybe three of the eight tracks um and it's very sparingly yeah. um but yeah i think much like opeth like because when I first approached Opeth, I couldn't do it. Like I got Watershed out of a, like off of a whim um, and eventually fell in love with it. But I remember when the first couple of growls came on, I'm like, I cannot do this yeah. at all. But it really shows the brilliance of an album when, you know, somebody that isn't used to the growls is able to stomach it, I guess, for lack of a better term, yeah. enough to like really get into it. Um, yeah, I just, I loved it. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, really only uh, this and like Opeth are the ones that I can handle. I've tried like <laughs> Between the Buried and Me and I have a hard time with that, even though I know uh, the music around it too. is so cool, but just it's a, it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, were there any other like really big albums that uh, you would qualify as like some of the best from this year? Oh, OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talk about some Coheed and Cambria. Mainly because it's not four hours long. Yes. <laughs> Thank God. You know, like you could digest that 55 minutes or whatever it is. And it's, and there's some stuff on it that's kind of cheesy, but it's a lot more of an enjoyable listen. Mm -hmm. And that yeah, to me I, gives it props and puts it back up where Coheed should be. Yeah, I agree. I felt like as much as I love the unheavenly creatures, it was just way too long. Oh, and yeah. I just ended up only listening to the same two tracks and never yeah. touched the actual album itself. Um, this one, even though there's a little bit of a dip in the middle for me in terms of quality, the beginning and the ending of that album, just I loved it. The, the last yeah. three tracks alone. The last three uh, and the first two are really good. Yeah, I, I fully agree. Um, I think that they can stop... Um, experimenting with more modern techniques that kind of play around with like the Imagine Dragons or Coldplay techniques. Uh, but it's still interesting. It's still fun. Oh, it's a fun album. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Nathan, I was just actually, before you jumped in here, I was watching your uh, video just before you started talking about this album. So I don't know <laughs> how you actually feel about this one. Yeah. Um, I, I like it. I kind of agree with you. Like, the last three tracks stood out to me as like really excellent. Some of my favorite stuff from the band, um, but everything that kind of comes before it was kind of a variable quality for me uh -huh. a little bit. You know, I'm not a huge Coheed and Cambria fan, um, but I've liked various things throughout their catalog. I prefer some of their older stuff really, um, but it was enjoyable. Listen, I, I thought it was pretty, pretty strong, especially that ending section, which Mm -hmm. Those last three tracks might be like my favorite tracks from the band of all time. So just yeah, really, it's, it's up there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, was there any other album from you, Nathan, that you wanted to highlight? Well, um, one of my favorites of the year. It's it was a little. Uh, it's come out recently, so I was unsure if it really fit the Go for it. the timeline here. But the Deer Hunters' new mm -hmm. album, uh, Antimai, was just excellent. I really love that band. Just everything they do is really the best and th they kind of enter into a new style here a little bit more funky and and has some grooves mm. to it um but it still stays rooted in in what they do best with a good concept and and mm. i just really the more i listen to it the more i'm getting obsessed with it and it's probably going <laughs> to be maybe my favorite of the year or at least in that conversation so i'm really 
really high on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it came out July 1st. So it yeah. was like just in. <laughs> maybe like, barely I, misses the mark. <laughs> I think we'll allow it for sure. It's definitely in our, our scope. Uh, yeah, that was one that definitely surprised me. Um, I just, it was interesting because um, somebody had pointed out that, oh yeah, it sounds very much like Crash Bandicoot and um, <laughs> that kind of flavor. And then um, um, the lead singer, Casey, I want to say his name was, um, who said, well, you think this, but I was more going for like um, Boingo Boingo or the Cardiacs. And I'm like, yep, okay. I don't <laughs> totally hear that now. Like, of course it's, it's more like that. Um, I've been loving it um, kind of like in the same vein that um, as I've been listening to the Porcupine Tree album and the more I'm listening to it, the less I'm getting out of it. I feel the opposite for Antimai where the more I'm listening to it, the more I'm getting out of it. Like each district really starts to take on its flavor while still being very rooted in this world. And yeah, the concept is just beautiful being the different districts of this world that the deer hunters constructing. Uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty brilliant. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're masters at that conceptual style mm -hmm. with the axe albums, and now I'm just excited to see where it leads, like where they how they could develop this concept further. And it's mm -hmm. like they've set the stage here and with the setting. Let's see where they can take it with adding in the characters and, and more of a storyline, perhaps. And mm -hmm. so that could be a lot of fun to follow. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I have three other best ones before we go into our, um, I don't know if we, were, if we want to go into those that surprised us or those that have disappointed us first, we'll kind of test the waters. Um, but uh, the one that I really wanted to highlight was The Loser by Gospel. Um, it's very much like extreme post-punk, uh, very aggressive. Um, and they actually just this weekend released a 20 plus minute song uh, as like a little EP that I have been gushing over. Um, you guys might need to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt because there is a lot of screaming and yelling in it. So just to <laughs> just to kind of prime the pump. Um, but like if you think of like musical stylings of like the Mars Volta or at the drive in like very aggressive rock but blending a lot more of a progressive rock and experimentation style to it. Um, I've been loving it. Uh, they use a lot of synthesizers, Moogs, and um, Mellotrons um, that I feel like that style of music hasn't really tapped into. And it just, I don't know, it, nour it nourishes my prog heart. I've been really, really enjoying it. So um, yeah, the, oh, what is the actual track called? It's something like, it's ridiculously long as a good, Frog song should be. Um, yeah, that's right. Oh, shoot. It's uh, da, 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 da. here it is. Oh, it just changed on me because I've been listening to a bunch of other stuff. Um, MVDM, the, mag the Magical Volumes, Volume One, the Magic Volume of Dark Matter, or the Magic Volume of, and unfortunately, my phone <laughs> <laughs> stops running out of. Um, but yeah, it's 21 minutes long and it's, it's gorgeous. Um, and it came out this past weekend. So if you can stomach it, I highly recommend checking it out. Cool. Um, yeah, the other one was the title, um, the self-titled work from Zealand Arter I loved. Um, hmm. Heavy, uh, it infuses like, kind of like black gospel music with very black metal. So it kind of, infuses those two together um and i've loved it a lot of people are saying it's not their favorite zeal and Arter work but i think it might be their best and finally the unfolding by hannah peel and para orchestra uh if you like experimental neoclassical noise music um i've been listening to it a lot falling asleep and um i think it needs a lot more love than what it's been getting because it's very ethereal very like i've been reading a lot of books documenting the bottom of the ocean and like it's the perfect soundtrack to that so cool. yeah before we move on was there any other like big uh acts big uh albums that you guys have been loving that you think need to be showcased got one that's not exactly new but it's the the mm. 
2021 <laughs> Norse mm-hmm. Fest. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's really good. I don't know if you got your coffee. Maybe. Yeah, I, I have mine. Yeah. You only have unfortunately that... I didn't jump oh, on it quick enough to no. get one. I don't like the packing whatsoever. I mean, just yeah. put the CDs in there. Oh, yeah, I don't like okay. really that oh, either. Oh, it drives me nuts. <laughs> I was I was say, how do you even showcase it on your shelves, right? Do you put well, it in yeah, with your DVDs? Hard. <laughs> yeah. I like before when they had the big like earbook. Yeah, even like, if it case. was like you yeah. know, three miles, miles long, but mm-hmm. yeah, I'm trying I to just, see. Like, like, I got... Yeah, keep going. I'm just gonna grab one. It's so. really good, like it's well documented and uh, I, I like the second concert the best where they do all the long oh yeah, yeah danger like, stuff. Keeps but... folding out and keeps yeah. folding out and keeps <laughs> folding out, right? <laughs> So like I've got an old copy of my Testament Volume Two live, but uh, yeah. yeah, it just it's like it. Uh. <laughs> oh boy, uh, Nathan, was there any other ones that you wanted to showcase? Um, well, there's uh, several I liked. Some of I liked the the new Tangent album, uh, Songs from the Hard Shoulder. I thought was uh-huh. Uh-huh. strong. A uh, really good release from them. Some really cool epics that uh, showcase some of the best styles of the band. Um, I like the new Bubble Math record, uh, Turf Ascension. I thought I that was that really noted cool. Down, I'm going to yeah. check that guy out. Yeah, really intricate and you know, kind of quirky and uh, almost avant garde in places, but with good melodies and really proggy. A lot of different changes in the music, very adventurous sounding. So I really like that, and I really liked kind of away from prog a little bit but i like the everything everything album raw raw data feel i thought that was really cool as more of a poppier album maybe indie rock style more so than mm-hmm. prog but really cool yeah uh, it's been getting a lot of attention this year i gave it a listen it was it was good um i didn't return to it quite as much as a lot of other people did but i'm yeah. I, I i enjoy everything everything but i'm not the biggest fan of theirs sure <laughs> yeah that's fair <laughs> um I think we can transition right into those surprises, like those albums that maybe not were like our favorite, but either came out of nowhere or just kind of surprised us. Um, and yeah, I want to echo uh, Nathan what you said about the tangent, because um, I was I was expecting, and I know this is going to sound bad, but I always feel like the tangent has two not so great albums followed up by a really good album, and then two not so great albums followed up by a really good one, and the last album of theirs honor reconnaissance followed a proxy and i loved proxy and didn't like auto reconnaissance so i went into this one kind of prepared not to enjoy this it as much and i found i found i really liked it hmm. um still not necessarily their best i mean worlds away from you know my favorite ones from like a place in the queue and not as good as the book um but yeah i still found really like strong melodies strong impactful choruses um love the longer stretches of music and i think that's where they really excel i just i just wish that they made it come to a, a like a head a little bit better like brought the music to a very interesting crescendo by the end but still mm-hmm. like one of their better albums at this point yeah, I thought it was in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a little weirdly structured, I guess, especially with that like shorter song kind of tacked on to the end of the album. It's mm-hmm. kind of a weird ending to the album where it could have had a more epic conclusion. But yeah, mm-hmm. so I kind of agree with that part. But yeah, the epics themselves all are pretty interesting and varied, and that's where the tangent shines to me as well in those longer form pieces. Yeah, it's yeah, really cool. I was a lot of I was playing. Mm-hmm. I was surprised it kept my attention with GPS Vultures being the instrumental track. Yeah, yeah. And having a, like a standout instrumental track at 17 minutes and still keeping my attention throughout it, I was like, "Wow, you guys are doing something real good here." Oh, right. Yeah, Brent, were you able to get a listen I've, of it? I'm not that familiar with them. I've listened to stuff here and there, but it's one of those bands I know I got to deep dive into. And mm-hmm. once you get to uh once you get to not as good as the book you can skip every other <laughs> album from them that's just my opinion wow. <laughs> that's just my opinion i like uh, some of them but <laughs> yeah, yeah, a- i mean it's it's touch and go right like i love proxy i love le track de travail or le sac de travail yeah um but all the other ones i can kind of take relief um okay <laughs> <laughs> but i i know that there are like real big fans of them out there um so oh, yeah, yeah I, I, this would be a good jumping in point 
Um, yeah. Their first two albums uh, was kind of a mishmash between Parallel or 90 Degrees and The Flower Kings. So they kind of like took the two bands and kind of made one band for a little bit. Oh, it can't be bad then. It can't. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not. Their first four albums are great. Um, yeah. Uh, was there any other surprises from you guys? Uh, albums that kind of came out of nowhere and like really made you go oh that's really interesting i didn't expect that i i do have one and it's not really prog related okay i have that on my but list too we uh everything now the album form of this i think is complete and utter garbage <laughs> I, I think just you know if they got rid of half that album you'd have a good ep yeah i and would agree I, I wasn't hoping a lot for them i thought they would recycle that and have the same album but when i heard this i was like i got a lot of vibes of course uh reflector and mm -hmm. the suburbs but the more of the emotional thing i first fell in love with with the arcade fire when i heard funeral yeah i felt all that emotion back again and this is a very important album for that purpose i think it's mm -hmm. going to be one of my top at the end of the year amazing yeah i'm I think I look a little bit more favorably on everything now. Like I like the last two or three tracks on there and I like the first two or three tracks, but yeah, I agree. The rest I can completely oh, do without. Um, don't know. The, the <laughs> um, I, I think Reflector is an absolute masterpiece. Um, and if you guys haven't heard Reflector by now, I think you should definitely go out and it's, listen to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do agree. Um, I, I have come back to We a lot, especially with some of the longer stretches of tracks they have on there. Um, yeah, I was, I was pleasantly surprised with We. Uh, uh, Nathan, have you heard We from Arcade Fire? Um, I, I listened to singles from it. I don't know if I've sat and listened to the full record yet, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but Arcade Fire is a band I'm not as familiar with, but I've listened mm -hmm. to, to songs th throughout and I, I enjoy what I hear, so, but definitely, need to check them out a bit more mm -hmm. so yeah they're the kind of like a, can, a canadian darling so anybody from canada is like okay you get the tragically hip yep. and you get arcade fire right those are the two yeah. that you almost get whenever you apply for your passport <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're uh, issued it that's right yeah here's your free issue of you know funeral from arcade fire yeah. um <laughs> yeah um i'm just trying to think uh i've i've about halfway through April and into June, I was doing a pretty deep dive of like retro prog and symphonic retro prog. So there were a few that really jumped out to me as being like really stand out. Um, uh, JPL, uh, a French artist, uh, put out his third um, third part of his three part trilogy with um, Actum. Uh, it's all in French, but it's got some really great and needy um retro prog on there uh same with lobat scarb uh their album you have it all i've been listening to quite a bit um the title track has a number of individuals from i think it's yes with um billy sherwood i think appears on it mm -hmm. um really like that one and the other one was ben craven with monsters from the id uh it's just a two two song album both at about 19 minutes um just loved both of those um so yeah those were the the more proggy ones and then if i know you guys aren't the, the hugest big metal fans but rings of saturn put out their self-titled album and it's very extreme metal but it has flavors this time around of more electronic music a little bit more I don't want to say EDM or um, dubstep, but it kind of has those flavors. Um, and this is coming from a band of Rings of Saturn that's like a speed tech metal band. Like you listen to it and you think you've put your like Nintendo on super fast mode. It's just like. <laughs> so, yeah, those are the ones that really stuck out and kind of surprised me uh, that kind of came out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, these are really, really juicy. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. So that was a lot of the ones that were on my list too that I was going to. Oh, shoot. Mention, I'm so. sorry. I stepped on your toes. Go for it. No, yeah, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. I'm glad bringing attention to some of those. I was going to mention Low, Low Bait Scarp. You have it all. Um, excellent record. I really love it. It has kind of a 
you know, Spock Spear style flavor to it or Pattern Seeking Animals as a mm-hmm. newer reference. Um, but that more accessible prog, but there's some extended pieces on it and some great uh, guest stars on it as well. And so it's, it's a really cool album that showcases some of the best to me of that, like you were saying, that retro symphonic prog style, as mm-hmm. well as the Ben, ben Craven as well as was uh, Monsters from the Id. Uh, really great uh, cinematic feel to uh-huh. a lot of orchestration and and really cool it almost sounds like a movie soundtrack at times but then there's that proggy style underneath it as well with some great uh david gilmore style guitars and things so really really cool record and then we mentioned it before but probably my biggest surprise of the year is that charlie griffith's uh yeah. record Lika, which i was worried would be too heavy for me but I, I just really enjoy it because it's so well crafted and and really tasteful how it's done and just really has a good variety of styles to it so I really enjoyed that one so those were Mm -hmm. the ones I had written down as my surprises for the year yeah and I've got a few that I'm I'm (laughs) waiting for and we'll talk about it I think in the next quarter um but the one that I forgot was Persephone uh their album Metanoia I think it is um if if you like um like um, Leprous uh, and some of their heavier moments, um, their latest album uh, really like, I, I, I've been coming back to it quite regularly and I'm hoping to get my review for that album out in the next couple of weeks. Cool, sounds like one to check yeah. out. I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, that Brent, was there, <laughs> was there any other surprises for you? Yes. Your review on it isn't out yet, so I don't know how you feel about it, but uh, Ghost of the Machine. Mm, uh, yeah, it's, I, it's I'm still waiting for, my, <laughs> waiting for my physical copy. I won't go into much detail, so you can have the floor on that, <laughs> but it's a it's good album. I agree. Um, so Rock yeah, this, it's yeah. Scissor Games by Ghost of the Machine. Uh, they actually reached out to me, and it was funny because they reached nice. out to me the weekend after I was like digesting it and really getting into it. And they're like, Hey, do you want a copy of it? I'm like, brah, I am like, like right into it already. Like I'm already diving into it. Um, I love the title track or I guess not title track, but like the first track, the 17 minute opener. Oh yeah. I really, really like it. Um, there is, I feel as though they, they leaned a little too heavily on some more of their ballad and slower movements and it wasn't quite as top notch as those bigger, faster tracks. Um, but the one, two punch of what was that double track? Um, I want to say it was like the rise of, I don't look that up. It's like the rise of something or other. Let's see, just want to double check. Mercury Rising, part one and two. Um, really like that track um but yeah and i get a little bit more into detail into my review which i'm hoping to put out wednesday or later (laughs) i've got a couple i've got a couple albums uh or reviews kind of queued that i want to get out first like the new black midi um that's coming out this coming week so but yeah scissor games was um a real delight i'm glad that you were able to yeah i've I've heard it probably six or eight times i'm not going to spoil it for everybody but yeah it's <laughs> it's good yeah um yeah nathan have you heard it yet or uh, are you putting it in the queue <laughs> no i haven't heard it yet <laughs> one on the queue i have to awesome. check that one out for sure amazing uh so let's transition then into some of those albums that came out that were a little bit of a disappointment um either we had high hopes or people were talking about it and we just don't quite get it. Um, I think, Nathan, if you want to start, because I think we've all started a a different section. So I'll give you the reins on this one. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, this is always a challenging section, probably for Mm -hmm. all of us. But um, because most of the time, if I'm really a fan of the band, they don't disappoint me very often. So I'm usually Mm -hmm. pretty, pretty happy with all the releases. I was going to mention, I know it's been mentioned, I was going to mention the Coed and Cambria record as a slight disappointment. Just like I said, I love the finale, the last few tracks, but I thought leading up to it, especially in that middle section, was a little bit disappointing to me. Um, so I just, I couldn't get into the full 
record as much as I was hoping. Uh-huh. Um, and so, you know, that was one. The other one I wanted, which I actually really, I, I like the album, um, but I thought it was slightly uh, lesser than some of their previous works was the new uh, uh, Kaipa album or Kaipa. I agree. Cog, which yeah. it, it was fine, but some of the pe- longer pieces were a bit uh, too overlong, I think, a little bit meandering and and uh-huh. it just it hasn't really stuck with me as much as I hoped it would. It's uh, so, but I really love their pr- past releases and I think it, it did a good job, um, but just wasn't in the top of their catalog for me. Yeah, I think it was better than their last album, Children of the Noise or Children of the Sound, I think it was. Mm, but sounds, nowhere, yeah. yeah, nowhere near as good as like in the wake of evolution or the other two like single word albums that I can never pronounce, like Vitjub or Oongdong or something. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I can't pronounce, but like those, like those three albums are just stellar. Um, and then when Children of the Sound and this one, Earth Cog came out. I was like, oh, it's it's fine, it's good, but like not that same kind of pantheon that those other other albums were from. Yeah, no. Uh, Brent, were there any that uh, kind of disappointed you within this quarter? Yeah, James the Breeze album. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, beautiful shades of gray. Yeah. Um, first, first of all. I don't know if it's the musicianship or the writing that brings it down, uh-huh. but because it's such a slower album, I thought we'd hear more emotion out of James Labrie and his writing. Uh-huh. There is that on there, but a lot of it is just your basic run of the mill top 40 stuff. Like that cover of Led Zeppelin's Ramble on me. Why even do that <laughs> if it's going to be exactly the same? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and there's a couple of singles wrong that like uh, what I missed is good. There's one other one that's really good, but the rest of it is it's just I don't know, really generic sounding to me. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can feel that. Like the first track um, was fun, um, but I felt like they leaned a little too hard on the acoustic guitar and not enough on like a little bit more of an electric sound. Um, well, I, yeah, and I think that was part of the plan, and yeah. I think that's what I was, I'm trying to get at is, if that was the case, why didn't James Lesbury, who can sing some really emotive, emotional stuff, not do that? Because mm, he can do true. it with dream theater stuff. Yeah. Why can't he do it on his own? And he's done it in the past with, uh, what was the one that was like back in 2005? Um, so I know that he can do it. I think for me, my enjoyment of this album was lessened with some of the other more singer songwriter. Um, like I'm thinking of Ross Jennings album that came out at the beginning of this year. Uh, that really surprised me. And I really, really liked that. And I was like, ooh, there's mm-hmm. going to be more of that sound. And when I came to Beautiful Shades of Grey, I was a little disappointed, I think based with what Ross Jennings had already done. And then with the three parts that he had with um, Neil Morse and Nick DiVirgilo, with um i don't even want to try to pronounce it <laughs> Troika. help me out Troika. guys what was it yeah. Yeah. yeah um so like this style of music can be done and done very well it just didn't quite meet that same level that these other guys were doing yeah yeah, yeah. for sure um any other disappointments or just the one that's pretty much it that i've okay. really listened well, that's to good. that's good uh, yeah, for me, there were two that we haven't talked about yet. I mean, I was a little disappointed with Arcade Fire's Wii, but upon thinking about it, how much better it was from everything now, I think has elevated it a lot more. Um, I, was, I wasn't necessarily disappointed with Porcupine Tree's um, closer continuation. I just, I think with because I've put them on such a high pedestal, because it's not a masterpiece, I'm like, oh man, it's not a complete perfect album. Uh, yeah. But I still, that's, I still that's, end up. <laughs> you and might that's be unfair. careful, careful of mm-hmm. that because I felt the same way about the Ultimate Universe with Transatlantic. I mm-hmm. placed it so high that when I first mm-hmm. heard it, I was like, oh man, what? yeah, I can't, I can't enjoy it for what it is. And so yeah. I'm starting to kind of nurture myself to get it back to that. But there were two that I was at least expecting and hoping more from. 
Uh, the first one was Rebirth from Anthony uh, Culligan or Kalugan. Um, he's the mastermind behind um, Carfagan. Um, okay. Really beautiful retro prog, very cinematic, very, he plays very well in a long stretch of music. Um, but I just felt with this one, Rebirth, after Carmeli, um, Chameleon Shapeshifter, both of them are working with smaller pieces rather than like a 20 minute piece followed up by another 20 minute piece. And I feel like that's crippling his creativity. Uh, didn't enjoy that one quite as much as some of his past work. Um, and the last one, as much as I enjoyed pieces of it, the overall album of Omni Gargantuum from King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I love the first two tracks and I love pieces of it, but because there's so much and so much variety, when it hits, it hits hard, but when it misses, it misses hard. So it's a little bit of a mixed grab bag for me and it's harder for me to return to as a whole, especially when that was like my number one most anticipated album for this quarter. Uh, so those were the two that I wasn't too excited for. Um, but yeah, um, anything else before we go into what we're looking forward to in the next quarter? Anybody go to record store day? Ah, oh, I missed it, which probably a good thing because as I mentioned, I am saving <laughs> for a wedding and a house. So yeah. both of those are, you know, they're not cheap. No, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so no, unfortunately I, well, luckily, in some cases, I I didn't. But man, I wanted that Peter Gabriel. Um, that's the one. That's the one. Oh, I see it. And like the price tag now is like upwards to seventy five dollars. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't. I can't do that for a single album. No. I just can't do it. No. It was it's either just... that or the Steve mm -hmm. Hackett thing. I'm like, oh, I can't afford both. Yeah, yeah. I did pick up uh, later on, I picked up the Steve Hackett with orchestra um, yeah. live. Uh, so I was able to pick up that one, but I only picked that one up because it was like $30. Uh, and I'm like, okay, I can I can justify $30. I can't for the life of me justify no. $75. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I love that concert, I think it's a brilliant concert. No, it and is. It's very good. My, my brother and I actually went to a theater to watch it because they were doing a lot of like 3D stuff. Okay. So we got to see it with 3D. So a lot of like the augmentations that they do with like the lines and whatnot were presented in a three-dimensional landscape. It was very fun. That would be um, neat to see. Mm -hmm. It was different. Like um, I hadn't seen a concert like that before, uh, especially when I couldn't actually be at the physical location. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the closest thing you get. That's right. I, I'm surprised more bands aren't doing that. Like back in the 70s, they were doing that quite regularly. Oh, yeah. with, like the song remains the same from Led Zeppelin. And I think the Who did one of those as well. Um, I, I'm surprised we're not getting more like movie theater theatrical releases to some of these bigger, like I know, I think David Gilmore did it once with his um, Roy Albert Hall performance and yes i believe you're right i remember seeing that one being advertised but like i'm surprised bands like muse aren't doing that um with their shows That's so i think this thought yeah so this this transitions us really good into what we're looking forward to um so who does anybody want to go first into some of the albums that they're looking forward to from sure. july to september Hopefully Peter Gabriel releases that new album that he's <laughs> promoting. That was yeah. a good segue, right, guys? It was I didn't perfect. Plan that yeah. at all. It was like it was planned. <laughs> but that's the only thing off the top of my head that I'm uh -huh. really stoked for. Yeah, no, well, that's fair. I'm excited for the new uh, Rio Okamoto uh, solo yeah. album, Myth oh. of the Monstrophus. Um, yeah. So that's one. I think that's coming out in July. Yeah, um, I, I have a advanced copy of it and okay. <laughs> get hyped. It's it's, <laughs> cool. it's real good. Yeah, sounds like it's yeah. going to be a good yeah. placeholder for like a Spock Spear. Like, yeah, uh -huh. he's crazy too, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be high <laughs> energy. Really and yeah. I'm looking forward to a Lonely Robot, uh, mm -hmm. Model Life coming out in August. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. Um, I think Arena is coming out the new album. And uh, 
King's Crusader. X as well. Yeah, King's yeah. X is coming out with one. I think Queen's Reich is also coming out with a new album in August or September. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've heard whispers of them. Um, yeah, the the main ones that I'm looking forward to, uh, Muse, Will of the People in August. Sure. Uh, I'm a huge Muse fan. So uh, even with some of their lesser great albums, I'm still like, no, they're perfect. Don't talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm also really excited for Motorcycles' new album, uh, Ancient Astronaut, I think it's called, again, August. Um, their last album didn't hit me quite as hard, but, like, the albums previous to those were just chef's kiss. Um, and if we're looking at some of the more heavy stuff, Fallujah has a new album coming out in September. Um, that's, if, again, if you're into, like, death metal, power metal, so fast that your face melts off your face um <laughs> yeah it's it's an acquired taste i'll put it that way <laughs> you don't know if i want that you don't want your face to be melted off <laughs> <laughs> readers of the lost ark that's true it's true yeah <laughs> uh so those are the ones that i'm looking forward to uh, for the next one um and yeah i think that's about it was there anything anybody else wanted to chat about or um have either, of you, either of you heard uh, the album of the group Smile, which mm. is the Radiohead offshoot? I, I, I haven't heard any I of it yet. Don't, huh? Because I know Tom York put out a new. Well, yeah, new, that's, he put out, that's he what put it out is. something earlier. Okay, yeah. I haven't had a chance to listen to that. I no, just I haven't either. After I've his to a couple tracks, but I haven't heard the the full thing. I've been trying. I'm not too familiar with Radiohead, so I've that's a, a band I've been wanting to get into more. So kind of interested in that stuff right now. Yeah. You should yeah. check out the video that Brett and I did talking about our favorite tracks from Radiohead. Uh, oh, cool. It'll give you a good yeah. roadmap at least. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. No, they're a good band to discover. Oh, good. I'll, that's, a, I'll... that's a good one. Well, Radiohead being is a good band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Go awesome. down that rabbit hole. You'll be, you'll be happy. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Uh, great. Well, thanks, guys, for coming on and chatting about, uh, you know, this little look back at the last three months. Um, looking forward to the next three, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So go check out both of their videos and their channels. I left both of their links down below. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it, guys. Uh, thank you once again for coming on and chatting with me. Uh, yeah. Good night, Nathan. Good night, sir. All right. All right. We'll yeah. Thanks, you, everybody. Charles. for Absolutely. Yeah, we'll do this again. Uh, cool. So thanks everybody for tuning in um, and until, well, oh man, it's always hard when I'm not like <laughs> sitting down and doing these to try to do my wrap up because, you know, I have it so ingrained. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, Notes, Nathan and Brent, we're out. out. Right on. Good night, guys. Yep. See ya. See ya.